Good to see you. Hope that you're doing well. Glad that you came to make it tonight. Uh, we do have one prayer request in our prayer meeting just this past week. Uh, Mr. Barmil, what was his first name, Michelle? Chuck. Chuck. Chuck Barmil. Uh, we prayed for him. He was in the hospital with COVID, uh, but he did pass away today, I believe. So um, we know he passed away. I believe it was today. Uh, so, I, okay. So we do want to remember him and his, or his family in our prayers. Uh, so if you would, let's go to God in prayer as we begin and uh, think about that family. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you do for us. We're just so thoughtful and mindful of your grace and your mercy towards us. And we're so thankful that you have given us another opportunity to learn from you and to learn about your word. And to try to understand it, to open our eyes and our ears to what you have for us. Dear Lord, we are mindful of the family, of the Barmil family, who's dealing with a lot right now with the passing of Mr. Chuck. And we just ask that you just be with them and help them, uh, give them help during this time and help us to help them in whatever way that we can. Dear Lord, if we know them, dear Lord, we just ask that you just give them comfort and, and help them to, uh, to see you in this moment and desire to be with you in this time. Dear Lord, we do thank you so much for Mount Zion and what it means to all of us. We're so thankful for this church and that it's here, that it's able to help us and guide us. Dear Lord, we're just at, we just ask you that you help us to always be thoughtful about those that are around us that need a church family. We're, we just ask you that you help us to think about those that are lost and need help. Dear Lord, help us to be shining beacons of light for all those all around us. Dear Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you for what he means to all of us, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. For a song this evening will be When He Comes in Glory By and By. When He Comes in Glory By and By. We've seen both verses of this song. Oh, how sweet will be to meet the Lord when he comes in glory by and by. What a song of praise will be our Lord when he comes in glory by and by. How sweet, how sweet when he comes in the sky. Oh, 
song this evening will be Zion's Call. Zion's Call. We don't have the slides for this one. We'll sing the first and the last verse. After the song, we'll have our opening prayer, and then we'll have our lesson. Zion's call, sweet leaving, so our land and sibiting us, look to realms above. While the light from the throne shines for you and me, let us list to the call of love. Zion's call, it is ringing, coming from sunshine and the rain we've had the last few weeks, Lord. Lord, thank you for bringing us here tonight and let us worship and, and sing praises to your name and learn more about you and your word and that way we can go out and spread it and, and just be a light in the community, Lord. Lord, I ask that you be with the sick and the ones that are shut in. I ask that you be with people in the nursing home and um, for, that are undergoing surgeries and tests and things of that nature. And, Lord, if they're, if they're hurting, I ask that you put your hand on them and, and bring them back to they want to come their work health and, and just comfort them, Lord. Lord, I ask that you be with our men and women that serve overseas and fighting for our freedom and our and our and their families back home, Lord. I ask that you be with them and, and bring them back home to be your will. Lord, thank you again for everything that you do for us and, and we love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. When I worked in Jacksonville, uh, I worked at a Publix. We have one here in town, but there is one big difference between our Publix and the Publix in Jacksonville. And that is, is that in Jacksonville, we sell these little tiny pieces of paper that if you win on the piece of paper, you get money. Has anybody ever heard of these? They're called lottery tickets. Has anybody ever heard of a lottery ticket? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, you know, lot, the lottery is an interesting thing. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm, I'd probably lean towards it's bad. But it is interesting how much people will spend on lottery tickets. It is amazing how many people will spend on lottery tickets and think that they could do what with the lottery tickets, right? That they'll win. There are, uh, and I did some research today. I don't do research very, very often, but I did a little research today. The odds of winning a, a lottery ticket, you know, like getting all the numbers right and doing everything that you're supposed to do and winning big, hitting the jackpot, is somewhere around, I believe, one, one in 236.2, I believe it's billion or it might be million chances, right? It's something, it's either an M or a B, uh, forgive me if I'm, if I'm mistaken. Uh, it is almost impossible close to impossible that you would win right on the first ticket that you ever bought. Uh, and so I looked up, what, what do you have more of a likelihood of doing than winning the lottery? Okay, so I looked this up and I wanted to share some of them with you. You, have, you are more likely to go to the ER with a pogo stick related injury than winning the lottery. It is a one in 115,300 chance that you will, that you will do that. 
you have a 1 in 10 million chance of becoming the United States president. Right? Okay? You have a 1 in 10, a one in 10 million chance of that. I don't know about this one. You have a 1 in 7,000 chance in being deemed demon-possessed. Right? But Brittany's met me, so I don't know about that. Um, you have a 1 in 1 million chance of having a genius child, and my mother did win that on the third <laughs> child. You have a 1 in 5 million chance of dying because of hot tap water. But your chances are not zero, remember that. And you have a 1 in 7 million chance of dying from being a left-handed person misusing right-handed equipment. Okay, so if you're left-handed, be, be warned, okay? But, you know, if I were to tell you the statistics, if I were to tell you the odds of what you would win uh, if you were uh, wanting to play the lottery, you would probably say, well, you are absolutely right. It is a long shot that I'm going to win the jackpot. It is a long shot that I'm actually going to win anything. I might not get any money. I think that I'm probably just wasting my time. You know, I've heard everything that you've told me before, and I'm, and I'm probably not going to win. But there's something that clicks in our brain where we think, we just think, we are the exception, don't we? There's something that happens in our brain where we think, I'm the exception to the rule. I'm, you know, it's not going to be the same for me. It's a little bit different for me compared to everybody else. It's a little bit different, but I think that I have a chance. I have a little bit of a chance. And we lie to ourselves. Because what we find out is math doesn't really lie. We just think it does. Which kind of made me think about this passage in James chapter 1, verse 22, the one that's on the screen right now. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, but deceiving or deceiving yourselves. I think that's a short little proverb that I think means a whole lot and that should mean a whole lot to us tonight. There's one thing in knowing the 66 books of the Bible. And being able to say them all and say them in order. And maybe even you did when, when I was going to Florida Bible Camp growing up as a kid. One of the things that we did in competition was that we tried to say the books of the Bible as fast as possible. You know, who could say the books of the Bible as fast as you can and who would get the, the fastest award? It's something to know the 66 books of the Bible. But it is something entirely different to know the Bible, isn't it? It is something to know that Jesus was a man and that Jesus came to the earth and lived a life and taught a bunch of teachings. And he taught things like love your neighbor and love God. Uh, you know, he taught all of these things. He said to treat your neighbor like you want to be treated. Be good. Don't get angry. You know, be kind to someone. If some, if some person gives you a bag and walks one mile, you just go a second mile. It's easy to spout out those facts. It's completely different to live them. It's completely different to be in that situation where someone gives you their bag and says, walk with me one mile. That second mile is going to feel really, really tough. To be a doer of the word. That the facts and the, and the interesting parts of the Bible, the history of the Bible, the theology, the things about God, you know, that these things I'm able to share with you and I'm able to tell you what we need to do. We need to be gracious. We need to be kind. We need to be good. We need to be uh, teaching. We need to be helping other people. We need to be providing for the poor. It's easy for me to get up here and to tell you those things. And there's somewhere in the back of our brains, just like with the lottery tickets, that I think happens when we do those teachings. Yeah, but, and then fill in the blank. Yeah, but you don't know about the situation that I'm in right now. You don't know how hurtful and awful that that person is. You have no idea, Baron. I mean, I know that you're talking about feeding the poor, but I had this one poor person one time that wanted to take money from me, and they wanted to go buy alcohol and beer and all that. I know. We'll talk about that in our Bible class. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. To hear the word, 
and then to do the work are actually two totally separate things. And we will lie to ourselves every time and say, I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I know it, because I can recite that passage to you, because any one of you could have came up to me and recited James 1.22 without even looking at the screen. And yet are we living it? You might know the 66 books of the Bible, but do you know the Bible? Do you know what it's written? Do you know the story of Jesus? Do you know about the things that we ought to do? And if you know the things that we ought to do, are you doing them? Are you bearing the fruit of the Spirit? Something we've been talking about a lot recently. Have you been bearing the fruit of the Spirit? Have you been acting in a way that you probably are suffering like Christ suffered, and yet you are continuing to be his faithful servant? Are you living in a way that we could all be proud? Are you living in a way that would glorify God and be a praise to his glory, as Ephesians chapter 1 will talk about? I don't know your life. I know that if you need to become a Christian, we have the water and it's here. And you, if you're ready to be baptized, we're ready to put you in the water. I know that if you are a Christian, that maybe right now this passage is hitting you a little hard because you know, you know the passages, you know the scripture, you know what it says, you know the 66 books. But when it comes to the Bible, you don't know it at all. And it's because what you really know is just facts. And your actions tell you that all you know is facts. So maybe you need prayers. Whatever you need, we're here for you. Just together we stand. As we stand. I am mine, oh Lord.